feeling good. You know, uh, I think better than I expected. It's been a long two months, but uh, I'm ready to get this cut. A couple hours left, hour, hour two tonight, hour two tomorrow, and the hard part's over. Um, so Johnny's he's a tricky fighter. I think he's he's skilled everywhere, and I I think I'm well rounded too. Uh, I'd like to keep it on the feet to you know keep the crowd entertained. I guess uh, his last fight wasn't the most entertaining, and um, I've had some in the past too that weren't. But I think that he's got good stand up, and I do too. So uh, hopefully we can both showcase it and uh, make it exciting for everyone. The mental preparation is is the same, but it's uh, it's for two just very different things. But um, it's allowed me to be very focused. Uh, with this different uh, challenges, going up a weight class and fighting for a title. Obviously, fighting for a title to say that you're the champ of a weight class is always, um, you know, it's always awesome, really. You know, to to be able to say that, especially at the pro level, not many people get there. You know, a lot of people get that amateur title, then they turn pro, and then another amateur title, uh, amateur moves and wins. But to get that pro title is, is is you know, it's a crazy feeling. But um. So, going up a weight class, fighting somebody who's undefeated and at all finishes, um, you know, that presented challenges. People wondering if I could put on that weight and still be able to perform and um, against a tough opponent like that. And now the opposite, going down weight, seeing if I can make it and seeing if I could still perform at a high level. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, the same uh, type of focus. Um, just you know, kind of proving wrong people wrong, but proving myself that I can you know do it, and just setting my mind to those challenges. Almost three and a half too, because Joe dropped out um, of our fight uh, for reality fighting with about a week to go when he made the Ultimate Fighter. So I almost fought him too. Um, but no, I, I'm cool with all those guys. Uh, I, have, I have respect for the whole team. I think that, you know, I think it's mutual. Um, and every time when I see them, I'm cool with them. Chris O'Brien and, and Johnny and Manny still. So, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just weird. It's just worked out that way where they had guys rising up and I've been winning fights too. And, you know, we've, we've been matched up with each other, but there's no, like, actual, you know, rivalry or beef. I don't have beef with really anybody in the in the sport, I don't think. So, I mean, it's cool that, that, that people have that respect for me. Um, but it's weird in a way too, because I don't really like I don't I don't like having the spotlight. Um, I've I've kind of flown under the radar, I think, because I've taken some losses as an amateur, uh, as a as a pro by taking hard fights. Um, I think I have that little bit of you know that tough reputation because of because I've done so. Like even as an amateur, I fought a bunch of Muay Thai fights. Never fought a guy with a losing record. Um, fought in some tournaments with guys that had. 40 amateur Muay Thai fights. Um, amateur MMA never fought anybody with a losing record. I fought a few as pros, but um, not really, not guys that were 0 and 8, or 0 and 10. The guys right below 500, so like 1 and 2. But then I I fought a lot. I fought four undefeated guys in eight fights. I don't think anybody else has done that. You know, I'm three and one against uh, guys with undefeated records. So. I think I'm just always stepping up and challenging myself, even on short notice fights. And um, you know, I think so. That's gained. You know, I've gotten respect for that, and it's, so it's cool that that it's there. But I don't really like the spotlight. I don't like consider myself some like big name in in the sport or or locally or whatever. Really, I mean, like I'm still, you know, I'm the like UFC is the goal, and you know, I, I'm. Even when I, even if I get there, when I get there, I'm not. I'm still gonna be a small guy compared to a lot of big guys in the UFC and all that. And I just, you know, I guess that humble type of, you know, attitude has gotten me here. And you know, moving forward, uh, it's not gonna change. You know. Um, do you have any like final thoughts or anybody you like to thank or shout out for um, this whole camp, this whole process? Yeah, just thanks to my team, Golden Falcon. Rob Cipriano, Mohamed Lemjardine, my, my main uh, head coaches, um, FAA in, in Connecticut with Nick Newell. He's I cross trained there. That guy's a beast. Um, been getting a lot of work there. So thanks to all those guys. 
my boy, manager, bodyguard, Carlos Correa, and just all my family and friends that support me. Um, it's been a long 10 weeks. Usually, like I'm fighting at 45, fighting at 55, especially 55, I can eat a lot and, and still train hard and have fun training and work my ass off, but it, you know, I'm still like kind of joke, jokester in the gym. This has not been that case. Like, I can't eat shit for 10 weeks. It's been tough. I've been tired, I've been cranky, miserable in the gym, and I think everybody can't wait till this fight's over, including myself, so, you know, ready to go.